Next tonight, Britain's biggest force has revealed the staggering cost of policing Just Stop Oil protests. In London, 7,729,086 pounds were spent policing Just Stop Oil marches in the last three months alone. 23,597 police shifts were dedicated to the climate protesters. And despite the 515 climate marches in the capital, many deemed to cause serious disruption, just 271 protesters were actually arrested. With me in the studio is former Scotland Yard detective Peter Blexley, and joining us remotely is Just Stop Oil spokesperson Chloe Naldrett. Um, Peter, first of all, if I can get you um, your view, is, is the problem that the police are overstretched? No, the problem is uh, the police manifestly failed to deal properly with Just Stop Oil when they started their ludicrous tactics of gluing themselves to the roads and, and blocking traffic and the like. And if we rewind just those few short months, really, people might remember Sir Mark Rowley, the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, saying, we won't interfere with this legitimate protest because the disruption isn't serious. It isn't significant. When people like myself, other commentators and presenters were saying, oh, yes, it is, you need to do something. Well, the police failed the public back then and only today Assistant Commissioner Matt Twist gave a media interview in which he said this slow walking now is serious, is significant, it is crime and so we're going to deal with it. So to a certain extent, the police have themselves to blame for this situation. Uh, Chloe, if I can come to you then, uh, the, the Met pretty clear about the impact of protests like yours on their operations and we're talking about every officer present being pulled away from criminal investigations. I mean, do you care? Um, well, thanks for having me on for this conversation this evening, Penny. Um, so we've got to remember that protest is the cornerstone of our democracy. Um, it's, it's a fundamental human right and that what we're calling for is the government to follow the advice of the United Nations, the International Energy Agency, the British Medical Association and more in not licensing any more fossil fuels. So fossil fuels are creating this blanket of pollution around our earth, which is trapping heat inside our atmosphere. And it's directly responsible for these searing temperatures that we're seeing in Europe right now, resulting in wildfires, resulting in droughts, floods, crop failures. And what we're talking about, let's just put this, this money in context. We call £7.7 .7 million pounds sounds huge. It's less than half of 1% of the Met's annual budget. And let's put it in the context of something like the, the King's coronation, which cost £150 million pounds for one day. And of course, none of us had any choice um, or any say in that either. So I think we've got to put this in context. We're talking about the fact that our world is no longer safe for us to live in. I'm a mother. My children are no longer safe. Their future is no longer safe. We're ordinary people. We're doing, we're doing very mild-mannered protests, really, when you think about it. The roads that we've been blocking in London have been blocked for an average of, you know, of sort of between five and, and 30 minutes maximum. So what we're talking about is, is a proportionate response to an existential crisis. The thing is, why do, there will be so many people who are saying, why don't you just take it to those concerned instead of actually disrupting life for people who are finding it difficult enough at the moment? And Penny, when you say, and, and sorry, and just I just wanted to say about the fact that you know you're talking about them being a, a mild protest. The problem is that you end up with people who are just so annoyed uh, that we saw, for example, the other day, one of your protesters uh, actually um, suffering a, a, an assault. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's horrendous. It's an, an, an so normal take it to the people who are concerned. Kind of protest, well, this kind of protest wouldn't be acceptable under normal circumstances, but we're not under normal circumstances. We've got to ask why, why peaceful people are taking this kind of non-violent action. You know, but why not and, take and like it to say, those concerned instead of like actually say, disrupting is... life for the people, for the people who are trying to actually earn a living at a time when it's really, really difficult to do so? Yeah. Penny, I, I went to prison for a week last year um, because I broke a, a, an injunction. That's a private law. It's a private law that's been paid for at an oil terminal. That did not get anything like the kind of coverage, the kind of discussion that we need to be having every single day in every single space that these these slow marches have had over the last 13 weeks. I'm afraid <clears throat> I'm afraid saying protest in another way, it simply doesn't work.
Well, uh, what I would say is that this mind-numbingly daft process that they're doing is actually turning people away from the cause. If the history what books have you got prove, for that, if the history books have you prove got any evidence that Chloe that, is right, yes, have you yes, got plenty. Any evidence, Peter? Oh, hold on yes, just I a have. second, Chloe. Yeah, just yeah, bit... yeah. And we've seen members of the public irritated, mm. trying to get to work, trying to get to hospital appointments, trying to get the kids to school. Numerous examples of people taking the law into their own hands, unwisely so, and dragging these protesters out of the road. And of course, that very unsavoury assault that you referred to last week. And we've seen other examples of milkshake being thrown over the protesters and them being kettled mm. themselves. Their unpopularity is running rampant and they are turning people off their message. OK, Claire, uh, Chloe, if That's I can come back to... No, oh, actually, true. Chloe, yeah. all I was going to ask you as a question was, have you found mm. evidence that your protests do work and that actually more people are coming on to your side of things? Yeah, of course. We've got people who are signing up to come to talks and to join slow marches all the time. There's a huge silent majority who really respect and admire what we're doing, and I know that because I'm, I'm told that by people all the time. We also know there was a YouGov poll um, not that long ago which said that 85% of people in this country are really concerned about climate change. 75% of people want action to be taken. So, And, 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 we, and we know that People yeah. are behind this demand to end oil and gas. They wouldn't be behind that if we weren't out doing what we're doing. Well, and to be perfectly honest, I don't care if we're not popular. What I care about is the government stopping oil and gas licences and the future safety of my children. OK, and I would... And the government minister said today that that fundamentally is not going to happen. This, this movement is now a cult. It displays so many of the tick, tick, tick boxes that you would uh, apply to a cult. What they're frankly thinking? not, they're not going to succeed. Um, the history books might prove their messaging right, but their methods fundamentally wrong. And actually, I, I think I can also come back to you, Chloe, and say that although that the people do actually say that climate change is quite important, an awful lot of them, when you actually drill down into the numbers, say that they're very that, that they really are worried about it, but they don't want to actually do anything that disrupts what they are doing at the moment. That's the problem: is they want somebody well, else. So that's where. So that's where we really need the government to step in in the best interests of all of us. Look, we're not we're not calling for anything that that's not being asked for by the very the, the, the world's climate scientists and the United Nations and the World no. Health Organization I don't and think, the British Medical yeah. Association. I'm not asking you to listen to me. I'm asking you to listen to the scientists who say if we don't do this, we face an uninhabitable future. There's going to be a billion people on the move by 2030. What is that going to do to, to a civil, civil society? It's the biggest threat to civil um, peace. To, it's the biggest cause of civil unrest that we are ever going to experience. If you think that the refugee crisis is bad now, then wait until a billion people are on the move. If yeah. you think that it's difficult to feed your family because of the cost of living crisis and it's difficult to heat your home, wait until we're, we're, we're facing 60% crop um, reductions in, in Europe this summer because of the heat wave. There's just not going to be enough food to go round. And so how, we and how is inconvenient? Now. How is inconveniencing people as they go about their daily lives going to achieve any of your aforementioned points? I tell you what, I think we're going to have to leave it there. Sorry, Chloe. I think uh, Chloe's already. Um, I'd just uh, like to put come the back points. on that if that's OK. Just, just, like just, say, just really briefly, then, Chloe. The public discourse okay. around this issue. It's fundamentally changing how people think about it. All right. That's Chloe, thank you. It. Thank you very much, Chloe Naldert there and um, former Scotland Yard detective Peter Blexit in the studio. Thank you very much.